Um, thanks for doing this. What was uh, the goal of these five days ahead of official minor league camp? Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of also what you've seen so far? Well, I think the goal was really to get some, some of these young kids a, a head start uh, on spring training. There were some delivery things that we wanted to kind of address with some of the kids, some swing stuff we also want to do with some of the young hitters. Um, we have a ton of new instructors here, so it's an opportunity for them to get to know these kids in a slightly more relaxed environment before you know everyone starts competing for um, roster spots. So this is, a, a, again, a chance for us to, start, again, work on our leadership building, um, really kind of set the tone of what kind of camp we want to have, what brand of play we're going to bring to the table this year, um, and what it's going to look like here when we get the full population of player. You mentioned a lot of new instructors. Mm -hmm. So when you were when you got in the role in mid November, mm -hmm. when you guys announced it in mid January, kind of you're probably pretty busy. I've been really busy. <laughs> okay. um, so all those good, what was kind of your um, goals of putting together that staff and and what was your day to day like of making all those phone calls and, and whatnot? It was really just trying to find the right group of men to kind of bring into the room because we have some good good staff members here but you want to make sure that it's going to blend properly. They're going to bring something different than what's currently in the room. Um, so really identifying the, the, I think the right personalities and in particular spaces in which I wanted to try and engage and, and make a little stronger. So that was, you know, like mine is just banging my head against a wall, trying to find the right guys and making sure the right guys were available and see if we could bring them into the fold. Uh, but it was a, a lot of phone, a, lot of, a ton of conversations with, you know, uh, current staff members um, just friends within the industry, uh, just, just, you know, utilizing that, that phone book that we've had for so long, uh, being in this great game. So I've uh, just reached out to some, some really people, some really good people that I trusted um, to get some, some just really good names to add to the mix. And then to get that whole group on the same page, what's that process? You know, it's been uh, some Zoom calls, quite a few Zoom calls. Uh, I think Bobby Henley, who's our field coordinator, he's been on the phone relentlessly the entire offseason. Um, really just touching base with our young managers and making sure they understand what our brand is going to be and how we're going to play, how we're going to raise the players. Um, I think, uh, you know, Billy Miller has reached out to some of the kids as well as some of the players. We, we gave different instructors um, lists of, of players to reach out to to see how their winners were going. Um, but for myself and, and really trying to bring everybody together, it's been, again, these meetings and Zoom calls and then getting everybody together here and just having our, our breakout sessions that we had earlier uh, in January when we did the Young Guns Camp. Um, that was a great time for us to really start building on the Nationals way and how we're trying to raise and grow our players and how we want to attack the year. I'd like to talk about some players specifically. Sure. So uh, with Jackson Rutledge, we've seen him now in the system for a few years. What are you hoping to see from him in camp and in that You know, with Jackson, he's been working on his delivery, which is a lot better um, <laughs> from the fall league to where we are right now. It's really about pitch usage, understanding how his mix is going to play and, and how to attack the hitters uh, that he's facing. So those are some of the areas that we're going to really focus on coming out of camp. And, um, and really, you have to hone in on, on the role. What does he fit? Is he a starter? Is he a reliever? Really understanding the dynamic of his skills and how they play for us and how are they going to play for us in the future. Right now, he's in their starting rotation. We're going to keep him in the, in the rotation. Um, but it's, again, you know, we're, we're trying to get the best arms uh, up, the, up the minor league system as quick as we can to be able to provide insurance for our big league club. And, and for all these kids, it's about getting to the big leagues and putting them in the best place to achieve their goals and dreams as well. And with Cade, I mean, you seem like you can do already. So mm -hmm. that's like the next step. What does he need to do to make that happen? I think he's still evolving and growing as a pitcher. You're talking about a two-way player out of college who's just, you know, really been starting for a couple of years now. So there's some, some lessons to be learned, understanding how to, you know, um, be successful with his mix. He's going to have days where he feels great physically. He's going to have days when he's not feeling as well, but still have to compete to keep the club in the, in the game and, and stay competitive. Um, you know, understanding how to pitch if he's given up a lead early, how do you, you know, sustain that. And so all those lessons that I think he, he still has to learn and he will learn over time. Uh, those are some of the areas for me and uh, that he, I think he still needs to close down and we'll work on that here in camp and, and as we get out of camp. So it'll be fun. And we just uh, finished talking to Drew Miller. He was saying how, He's new. He wants to get to know everybody. He's got a big personality. Right? Yes. What have you gotten to know from him? You know, Drew, Drew is a, was a great acquisition for us. I love the switch hitting catcher um, with a great uh, strike zone awareness. I mean, this guy manages his own exceptionally well. And if you've done any homework on him, if you do a little deep dive and, and kind of see what he did last year, you'd be, I think you'd be really impressed. Um, for, for a catcher who's also a field leader, you, you almost need some type of personality because you have to really get out and communicate with a lot of different staff members on, on your pitching, pitching, excuse me, pitchers on your staff. So you need to have that extrovert personality to a certain degree um, because you really have to understand how they're wired and how they, you know, how they compete when they're, when they're going well, when they're not going so well, how do you, you know, you know, get them back into a, a game plan if they get out of it. So 
Um, he's been fun. He's been a great kid to work with and talk with. Um, his approach is, is improving. Um, and my big thing for him is, you know, handling that staff and, and again, then in the end, continue to lead the staff when he's on the field. And what's your message for guys who are still young, like an Armando Cruz, like an Andy Mara that are just starting out? Um, the message really is, is, is really to pay attention to the guys around you that are in that room, um, see how they're going about their business. Armando has tremendous energy and, and extreme upside. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him mature and grow. And I think, it gives him a chance to really gauge the other players and the guys who are double A who are triple A, even big leaguers. When you have, you know, some of these players that are out there, they're working out with, and he can actually see for himself, you know, how do his hands match up? You know, how is his, how, how is his quickness matching up? They're watching those guys in batting practice. How do they go about their approach, the way they carry themselves once they get to the ballpark and how are they carrying themselves off the field? So there are a lot of lessons to be learned for a young player like him, as well as Lara. And I think Lara's, you know, for him going out to a ball at the end of the season last year was a, a big jump for him. I think he learned a lot about how he needs to, um, you know, refine his mix to be successful at the next level. So it's all, you know, growing the young men, getting them pre prepared for what's in front of them. Um, and and they, again, we have some classroom stuff that we're doing with them as well. So lots of lessons. And uh, last one for me, on the player list is Quintana. He's, what, what are you looking to see from him? Um, you know, Rosemark on Quintana, that we, we try to get a healthy, you got to get him healthy more than anything. His legs have been the biggest um, hampering of his career, kind of slowed him down a little bit. Physical, good looking body. Uh, he's got some strength in his bat. Um, and again, we have to get him on the field so we can get some consistency with the with the game time. And you know, once we get on the field and can you know put some games under his belt, we'll, we'll make a better assessment of him at that time. Well, you know, being tough early on, you were just getting in the role was mm -hmm. adding some data to technology. Yes, um, I know you had David in that role. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're so early on. How's that been so far? Some of those new it's been really good, man. We, we've kind of rolled out some building blocks um, for our staff as well as our players um, on both the offensive and, and the pitching side. And we're actually building out our, you know, some player plans internally in which we're going to sit down with the players here in the next week or so and start engaging them on where, where you know, kind of how they played. Basically, when you're gathering this information, it's, it's what they've done in the past. And so we're going to take that and kind of push it forward to kind of help us uh, improve and accelerate our development process. So, I think we're making good strides, man. I'm excited. Some of the staff members, I, I, I walk down the hall and I get staff, staff members in there with David and they're getting educated on these building blocks in which we're trying to implement. So it's a, it's a nice soft rollout, but I think we're getting there. I've seen someone David has been in the clubhouse major level um, mm -hmm. with the Padres. Uh, Correct. And just kind of around players. Um, have you sensed early on that there's a good bridge between maybe the older school stuff and newer school tactics. I don't know. He's an interesting cat, man, because he, he's, he is versed on both sides of it. He's been around the game quite a bit and been around the game at the major league level. Um, and again, I think he understood uh, when we had our conversations of how we're trying to roll this out and, and, and really kind of grow and educate our players and staff. Uh, it's been a, you know, it's been a great, you know, listening partner for, for guys who are just curious. And he's also been able to kind of lay some things out and show them exactly how it plays and, and, and pull video and tie the video into the actual numbers so we can see how it's matching up to kind of help grow, again, both player and staff. So it's been wonderful. All right, we're going to open up the questions uh, from the Zoom call. So uh, go ahead, Mark Zuckerman. Hey, Dijon, thank you for doing this. Um, we appreciate it. Um, you mentioned earlier about uh, kind of a brand in the Nationals way. I, I wanted to ask you about that. Like, Certain organizations over the decades have kind of been known for doing things a certain way and trying to implement that throughout the system. Mm -hmm. From your time that you've been here, what have you felt like has been the Nationals way and what would you like it to be moving forward? You know, we, we talked about our offensive approach. We talked about um, our pitching approach and, and really, you know, being more aggressive in the zone and attacking the strike zone and offensively really trying to manage that strike zone and, and doing damage when we have the opportunity to do damage. So we've had some great conversations with our leadership team, uh, as well as our major league staff uh, earlier in the off season to kind of, you know, start building that out. And, and it's, it's an evolving um, concept and, and bridge as we build this thing. But again, it's, it's how we're going to attack the game. You know, how we're playing a hard nine every night uh, and we're going to be relentless in our pursuit of, of excellence. How hard is it to implement um kind of a, a standard across an entire organization and how important is it to have that because you notice by the time they get to the big leagues they've already kind of done things a certain way I think it's really important even from the, the first day they get into the organization um, and you have your your first orientation meeting you really have to start talking about how we're going to play and how the Washington Nationals play the game uh, they're obviously watching the big league games as well but but you see how they they go about running the bases and it's a learn I think it's a learn skill really of, of your brand of play 
um, having done this before with another organization, we felt like we, we started from ground zero, ground zero and built up our, our pitching philosophy and how we wanted to our, our deliveries to be presented, uh, how our first or third offensive package played for us, as well as our defensive package and, and, and with playing with no, no panic uh, on the defensive side of the baseball. So I think it's a learned skill that we, we try and implement at every level. Uh, we're going to make sure that we're, we're being disciplined about there being no little things in the game. And it's about execution and being able to manage a game under control and again, being relentless in our pursuit. Um, for the guys who would be in big league camp right now, but are down there, the, the non 40 man guys, what's uh -huh. that process been like in trying to map out a schedule for them? And uh, I know you don't know exactly what's going to happen here on the major league side, but how do you sort of prepare them for a season without necessarily knowing when that season would begin and how, how does that all work? Well, they, they've kind of blended into our, our camp here, our early camp. And, and again, there are some kids that are, non 40 that are in our camp as well that are all, that were you know possibly going to be invited to major league camp so you have to get them prepared for the upcoming season i'm, I'm getting these guys prepared for the upcoming minor league season um we're not going to uh I, I would say overextend anyone you know that has an opportunity to, to compete for a, a, a spot once this thing ends um we're going to make sure they're prepared though for when they open the gates and open the doors for the other side they're ready to go as soon as they come in the room so um, and I don't know if this is something you can answer or not, but like one way or another, would these guys be pitching in regular season games come April or is there a chance they would still, you know, if a big league camp is still going on, would they stay down there? I guess where, where's the priority there? You know, I can't really speak on that other than the fact that we're going to have these guys available when big league camp starts or the guys that are in early camp that had big league invites, they'll be, they'll be ready to compete for an opportunity to be on that big league club. Um, will they be further along? Because we, because again, we'll be playing some some games here internally, minor league games. You know, as well, as far as scrimmages, uh, inner squad. So they're going to get work in, um, and we won't put them in a situation where the you know that they wouldn't be prepared. That's for sure. Okay. Um, one name in particular, and I don't know if this is someone that you've seen much of, or I, I know he's not there, but uh, Christian Vaquero. Um, uh -huh. it, what is the plan with him? What have you heard about him, and and how far along has he come already? Um. Big, strong, athletic uh, switch hitter, center fielder, tooled up, really looking forward to getting him in the fold so we can start or moving forward with him. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to work with him yet, but I've definitely seen him at the complex when I went down on my last trip. Uh, so we're really looking forward to getting that, that completed and, and getting him moving. But he's going to be a, a fun, exciting player from the videos that I've seen. Uh, really electric hands from both sides of the plate uh, with emerging power. And I think the defensive skill set is going to be right now, which say it's, it's above average currently. I think it's going to be well above average as we get, get moving. And, and will he be down in the Dominican all year or is that too early? To I would say, that? yeah, the first year he would, I would, I would imagine he stay in the DR the entire year. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Weirich, NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Dijon, thanks again for, for doing this. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, you were part of the Dodgers player development staff when they first introduced TrackMan. What are the Nationals doing and, and what are you really pushing for, for them to be cutting edge, uh, pushing kind of a new frontier of player development? What are things that the, you're trying to kind of introduce uh, that are going to kind of push the Nationals to be at the forefront of that progress? Well, I think, again, we're, we're, we're being really aggressive with uh, trying to add some Hawkeye to our mix here now. Um, and we're, we're going to be using a company that will help us kind of break down this information as far as uh, the, the kinesiology for, portion of it to give us a little advantage uh, as we're, you know, working on swings, working on deliveries. So we've been really pushing hard and got some things, some things approved already, which I, you know, I'm so, so grateful for uh, that ownership has been uh, really receptive to, to some of these suggestions. Uh, these are things that have, were already on the table as I was coming in the door. Um, and so what we're trying to do now is really formulate a, a true plan to, to, to start moving it forward once it's implemented and we are, we're up and running. I'm hoping we'll have something um, running by mid June or, or, or early July. Uh, on the Hawkeye stuff for us at the minor league level. So that's going to be really exciting. Uh, and then you're gathering data, man, and we have to be able to break that data down and apply it to what we're you know, creating from our player plans and how we're going to use that. And, and again, if we can keep getting into movement science, uh, we've added a dietitian who's doing tremendous things for us here down in spring training. So we got to keep trying to search for those areas and you know, the, those spaces of opportunity to kind of get us in the forefront of, of the technology space, as well as the movement science space. And and keep growing this organization and, and, and challenging these kids to be the best that they can possibly be year round, not just during the season. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about your nutritionist, Emily Cayley, what are going to be her biggest priorities uh, in that role? And, and what do you see as her day-to-day -day responsibilities look like once the season starts? 
Well, right now she's after we had our physical, she's she's starting to log some data on each player individually and what we're trying to do with them from a body composition standpoint. Um, the, the things that we want to do as far as making sure they're, you know, getting the proper nutrition and being hydrated properly throughout the course of the year. She will uh, oversee all of our meals uh, from the minor leagues at all at all of our full, full season clubs, as well as here in extended, uh, as well as the uh, Florida Coast League. Um, so she's going to be extremely involved. She'll be traveling quite a bit, make, meeting with our culinary teams at every city in which we play in. Um, and she's uh, she's doing an unbelievable job thus far as kind of getting us off the ground here early in spring training. Um, I know you can't talk about guys that are on the 40 man, but you do have several players who have not yet appeared in the major leagues and, you know, would be kind of getting attention right now that aren't necessarily getting that player development that they might be getting. Are you as an organization, you know, worried about that? Uh, how are you kind of planning uh, to maybe address it once, you know, you're able to finally meet again? You know, once we, again, once we're able to meet, we'll, we'll address them once they get here. We have to understand where they are uh, as far as what they've done thus far during the off season. I'm sure all of these kids and, um, are, are doing what they need to do to get themselves prepared for spring training. Most of them have been in an organization for a period of time, so they know uh, how to get their bodies prepared for this. So we'll just have to see where they are when they get here, and then we will adjust accordingly. And I wanted to ask about Brady House. You know, he comes on really strong in, in the complex league. What do you see for him uh, as big goals for this year? Uh, and do you see him starting in low A? Uh, do you have a plan for that yet? What's kind of the, the goal for him? Man, you're trying to get my business in the streets early here. Hold on a second. We haven't played a minor league game, but no, Brady is, uh, he looks good here in camp early. Um, I think the biggest thing is really understanding how to play the position of shortstop. We're, we're working on that extensively here. He's getting lots of early work. There's some things we just need to clean up on the defensive side of the baseball. Uh, I think his offensive skills will take care of itself, really understanding how to manage his game and how, how pitchers are trying to attack him. So we'll just kind of, we'll again, play that by ear. Um, if we were, you know, leaving tomorrow, I would say he has really a chance of making an A-ball roster coming out of camp. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, Bobby, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, thanks, Kyle. Uh, hi, John. Thanks for doing this. Um, Pleasure. Kind of uh, just going back to what kind of Mark was asking, I know you can't talk about the major league guys, but when they do arrive, is it going to be a challenge kind of – and assuming there might be like a shortened spring training, is it going to be kind of a challenge to allow – those minor league guys that have been there already. And like you said, competing for big league spots um, to get the same amount of reps while also trying to ramp up the veterans is to get ready for a major league season. I think what's so great about it is that you have, you know, you have all these fields here so we can get at bats where at bats are needed. Um, if we're playing games already at the, at the, you know, the minor league side, when they, they do arrive again, they jump into those lineups. So we'll have to offset and do some inter squad games. We'll figure out ways to skin this uh, and make sure that everybody is prepared when they get ready to leave and go compete. Uh, at whatever league they're going to. So that is, again, just really adjusting based on how they are physically when they get here and how much work they've done prior to arriving. Uh, and then, we'll, again, we'll, we'll be able to ramp them up properly. How important or beneficial could that be for the young prospects, uh, just that experience in a major league camp with the older guys around, um, especially with your young pitchers and talking to guys like Strauss and, and Corbin and guys like that? It's, it's always really important because, again, we're talking about growth. We're talking about watching how, you know, really successful players uh, go about their business, how they manage their bullpens, how they manage their off days and what they're doing in between their, their, their throwing days. So all those things are important. And you, they'll still get those opportunities because we're going to have a, you know, a, some, for, some form of a big league spring training. So you just have to wait and see, again, what they get. Um, they may not get the full uh, load of every day being with them, but we'll, we'll find ways to make this work. And, again, I, I think they'll be prepared when it's time to go out and play. Um, and for uh, for Cole Henry, um, he's a guy that's been, you know, catching some eyes over the past year or so and rising mm -hmm. up in some prospect rankings. What are, you know, have, if he's there, have you seen from him in, in camp and what are the kind of the expectations for him this season? He is here. Uh, he is in camp. And he's looked good in his two bullpens. Um, he's, he's coming back from the fall league where I thought he pitched well in the fall league. We've been kind of slow with him. We just want to make sure we're managing his innings for the year to make sure that, uh, again, we, we get him to the end of the season and have a full season, being able to compete for a full year. I'm not sure if he's done that yet uh, from just looking at the raw data. So we're just trying to make sure we're, we're managing him properly in this camp to, to get him to the finish line. Thanks. My pleasure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned Brady's defense. I think mm -hmm. on his draft night, I think we were all asking about losing the third base already mm -hmm. um, because of his size. Mm -hmm. So he's been held in on being a shortstop. Yeah. Um, what do you like about one, just that mindset of wanting to stay shortstop, and two, um, be patient. Uh, let's let let's let his skills kind of play out. Let's uh, let us get our, our hands 
a little dirty as, as we're trying to work on cleaning up the, the footwork and, and just, the, you know, the baseball feel and IQ. And, and you have to remember, he's coming from a high school program. He's sure he played on the national stage with all the showcases, but the, the, the competition, once you get here in professional baseball, everything turns up. The velocity of the ball off the bat is a lot greater. Understanding where you need to be, positioning. Now we have some more advanced information that we can help him with getting himself in a better position to fill the fill balls and where balls are going to be hit. So we're going to do everything we can to, to see if this is uh, the natural position for him. Again, I come from, I had another really tall shortstop I had over in that other place in the West Coast, and he's still playing and got a whole lot of money just recently. So I'm saying that this is give this thing a little time. Let's see how it works itself out. Um, and, and again, we have young, really good young infielders. Uh, Rivero is another exceptional shortstop. Um, a cruise who just got here. So, we, you know, it's nothing wrong with learning the game at the, in the middle of the diamond. That's one of the best places to learn it. And if we do decide to move them over, we'll, we'll, we'll address that at that time. Yeah. As, as a follow up to that, as a follow up to Jeffy, follow up, when you have so many players at this, at this level who huh? can play the same position and mm -hmm. overlap, what is the priority that you put on right now identifying this is your role? Or would you like to see some, like the majority of these players who can? different positions just get experience everywhere. we're going to get experience we're going to get some innings in a lot of different places and, and yet we're going to keep growing their skill set the biggest thing is get on the field in the game competition um and they'll bounce around the infield they'll get their they'll get their innings at shortstop they'll get their innings at second maybe a third uh again just maximizing their skills and their ability because we have to you know again keep growing that bat if you don't hit it's hard to play up there you have to hit as well as play the defensive side so we're going to keep pushing